Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Jennifer Bevins. I am a landscape designer in Vero Beach, Florida, but today we are gonna do a garden tour um, at my client's house in Sebastian. So this is a typical backyard space. We didn't have a whole lot of room to work with, but I'm excited to share it with you guys because even though it's still a bit young, you can really see how those privacy buffers are coming in. Um, so my client contacted me, um, Randy and Marianne. Thank you guys so much for letting me do this video today. Um, but they contacted us because they really wanted to kind of create privacy in a pretty much rectangular backyard space, kind of soften it, um, make this their new entertaining space for outside. And um, right now they're pretty, pretty well concealed from um, what was a pretty obvious um, opening to the neighbors before. I'll be sure to slip in a um, before picture so you guys can kind of see how we started. It was a blank slate, so one of my favorite ways to work. Uh, but they had um, openings to um, both the neighbors, so this neighbor side here. And then a pretty much a looking directly at a pool screen um, and a pretty large pool screen from their neighbor to the rear so it really it really gave us the opportunity to really kind of bring in those layers and really soften that up so if you guys are you know looking to kind of create privacy in your own backyard space and you kind of want to you know nestle it in with plants and palms and um, this is kind of your vibe then stick around because I'm going to walk through and list all of the plants and the trees and I'll be sure to stick them um, in the, uh, in the description below, but I'll be sure to stick them on the screen below as we're walking through it so you guys have a, a pretty good shopping list of what you might be able to uh, bring to the table if, if you're you know in this vicinity. So um, we are in the Space Coast area, so um, anything I would say as far south as Jupiter, Florida, all the way up north to Coco Merritt Island, these things do super, super well in those areas. So uh, if you guys um, have any questions, um, please stick them in the comments down below. If I miss any of the plants or trees, stick the timestamp down below and I'll be happy to um, to um, respond to those comments so all right so right now we're gonna uh, start Bryce I think we should start let's start over here and um, we'll kind of just walk through and talk so we're starting here at the corner of the buffer. This is kind of where the buffer starts. My clients were fortunate enough to have a little bit of their natural privacy here. This lot's not being developed yet, but we're kind of giving this a little bit of time to grow because as you know in Florida, the lots get snatched up in no time. So this is um, hopefully gonna be full and lush by the time that that happens. So, um, so I'll start with the plants and the trees. So these guys here, of course, are foxtail palms. And I just love this chunky base that they have. This tree is, you know, it's a staple in a garden. It's just a nice, clean, it's a self-cleaning palm. So when the uh, limbs are ready to go, they just drop for you. It has a nice, clean trunk base. So, um, you know, which I tend to really love for palm trees because there's nothing for bugs to hide in. You know, it's just kind of a nice, clean trunk base, and I like the stature that they give in a palm in a in a plant grouping. And then, of course, they're called foxtail palms because they have that great crinkly kind of frond to the leaf that uh, is supposed to represent a tail. Now, these guys will grow into that that 30 to 32 foot in height, so they are a palm tree that can actually really um, fit into most Florida landscapes. You know, they're not gonna be like a royal palm that's really gonna get to that 40 and 50 foot range. So they will actually live a nice long life back here and create a beautiful grouped canopy amongst the other palm trees. So foxtail palm is one of my favorite. Okay, so just down below we have um, gold mound. And those have recently been trimmed. Um, I wish I would have gotten this video out um, last month. Everything was just so lush and perfect, but right now it's, um, it's a new trimming. This uh, planting is about, I think it's about five months old. So it's still really in the new stages of planting, um, but you can kind of see what it's gonna do. Of course, one of the other staples that I put in the garden are quarter lines. I, um, I love these. These are anti loo. These are fabulous for sun, no sun. They can't handle direct afternoon sun, but they can handle afternoon sun if you're going to have a palm tree or a palm canopy over them uh, to give them a little bit of protection. Um, so they can handle um, a decent amount of shade, filtered light, morning sun, and if that you can put them on afternoon sun if you get controlled coverage over top of them for some filtered protection. 
Um, to the back here is a traveler's palm. I just love these as a backdrop. They just scream tropical. And later we'll get a, a picture of these um, as at a further of a distance. So you really get to see what they do as a, as a great backdrop. So these are going to be stunners. They do get quite large, but I really do think they're gonna fit in lovely as the backdrop. And this is where I usually place them in the garden. I usually put them all the way towards the rear because you know, you'll get to see this beautiful fan. And then you're not really able to see much of it right now because it's still a young tree, but this, this center is to me such a stunner. It's just such a piece of art in the garden. And the larger that gets, the more pronounced this gets. And then of course, you're gonna see that in the upper, you know, above the plant grouping. So that new, that new center is gonna be more in line with this, which is just fabulous. I just love the way that looks. They become kind of a, a, a backdrop, like a wall in the garden, so. Uh, Bryce, let's move over. We'll kind of come further in. So the gold mound are a perfect, almost like a ground cover. This is the height that you want to keep them. You just allow them to grow together and just become a nice, bright spot in the garden. I think they do that. Um, they don't really offer the best bloom. Uh, it's pretty insignificant. It is a kind of a purplish color, but what's really lovely is this leaf. This leaf is just a stunner. And then again, you know, we're in a dark spot right here and against these colorful quarter lines, I think they do a nice job of becoming a nice bright border in the garden. So right here, I know you guys know <laughs> this palm. I use this palm pretty often because I just love what it does. This is a triangle fan palm. And of course it's got a triangle. It's the name is triangle because it is shaped like a triangle. So it has three sides and it's just, it's just a gorgeous tree. The older it gets, this Madagascar fir really becomes more and more pronounced. Um, like you could see in my garden, um, they're just, I just love those centers. The older it gets, the brighter it gets. So it really creates that gorgeous um, silvery tone in a garden. So I'll usually bring greens around it and burgundies and yellows, and then that silver just pops. So this is a young tree, but it's gonna really, really do the job of becoming a nice centerpiece on this side of the buffer, on this wall. To the back, I have a pygmy date palm. And again, we're surrounding it with green. So it's really going to just kind of give you a nice soft backdrop. I just love what they do. And those guys max out at around 10 to 12 foot tall. So it's never gonna outgrow that space. And it's always gonna be a perfect backdrop to this tree. And again, we have it here in this corner area to kind of fill in this corner spot. And I think it does a lovely job of that. To the back, we have another anchor um, foxtail palm. And then some Songs of India, Bryce. I don't know if you can see those yet. Those are those variegated plants there. Those are Songs of India. I love how bright and colorful they are. They can really take a dark spot and make it interesting. Those will fill in all underneath the pygmy and they get a little bit crazy, kind of like Cousin It, but they kind of just really just go to town of filling up a space. So they're not quite there yet, but they're going to be awesome as they grow in. These down here, if you guys follow me, you know I love Sanchezia. This leaf pattern to me is just absolutely gorgeous. They have done so well. And um, they, again, also have been cut back, but they're just, just stunners. I just cannot wait to see them all grow together and become a nice thick grouping in this corner area. I just think that they're perfect for that. Again, we have a triangle palm. And you kind of, you guys kind of see the pattern that we have, we have going. We've got, you know, some dwarf chunky palms, and then we've got something vertical in the center, and then again we go with something dwarf and chunky. And you know, th this is where the layers really come in. And as these things grow. Um, Randy and Marianne are not done. They're gonna be able to tap in some intermediate palms and plants to really kind of continue that pattern. This is a fantastic uh, base to start with. And then once these things really kind of really take off and grow in, it leaves us some underplanting room to kind of stick some cool features in and, you know, just really, um, really allow it to grow. And so, and I think it's gonna do that just, just gorgeous. Okay, and then right here, these are not quite in bloom yet, but these are dwarf firebush. You kind of see how the new growth is coming out. I love this leaf on this plant and the blooms are fabulous. They
our native plant of Florida. So um, the birds, butterflies, everything, and everyone loves firebush. So they too will fill in all of this, this um, all of these will grow together in this grouping. Now, this pygmy date palm, like I mentioned, the, and the other one's gonna grow into that, um, you know, 10 to 12 foot range at max, which is gonna be perfect for coverage as far as that screen room goes. But the negative to that is you're gonna get about a three foot trunk. And so these are perfect for a three to four foot border. So this is gonna kind of create a skirt. So you have blooms and color at the bottom, and then you've got fronds that are a permanent structure in the garden. So, um, to the back, I've just popped in um, some philodendron saloons there, and those are going to get quite large and quite full, so those will do a nice job of becoming a backdrop, and those are the um, split leaf, and they just, uh, they do a nice, they're, they're just a great clumper, so. So here, you know, and I'm going to show you a before picture, but, you know, here the screen um, room was pretty prevalent um, to not just the patio space, but the windows, the doors, everything kind of opened up, the master bedroom, everything was kind of shining in this direction. So this area right here, this little section got more dense, more more coverage, and um, it's going to abs absolutely really create a, a pretty much of a privacy wall here for our clients. Um, so we have got a grouping of pygmy date palms. Again, at that 10 to 12 foot range, they're gonna be perfect. And then the plantings that you see under them are gonna be that perfect three to four foot in height to cover up those trunks. So you get color and then you get fronds. The palm tree here in the center, this is an Alfredi palm. And um, he's still coming into his own. He is newly planted. So uh, this is a very slow, slow growing palm. This one's actually quite old. Uh, but this is also called the cold coconut palm because they had that long coconut limb to them. They get real full, real thick, and really just become a, a fantastic centerpiece. They're almost like a big fountain space in a garden. So I can't wait till this one really takes off and does that. I'm going to have to come back and do an updated video of this space and you know really guys show you guys how all of these gaps are filled because that's. Um, you know, that's, that's the part of a, a tropical layered landscape that I love when that all fills in and all becomes lush and tropical and, you know, everything's in bloom. But, you know, I really wanted to show you one shortly after it was planted. So you really kind of got an idea of, you know, it doesn't have to be thick and full instantly. You, it's really going to create that impact um, in, in no time, especially if you're in Florida. I mean, you, <laughs> it literally grows overnight. So, um, so you know, allow it to do its thing and then tap in as you go. You know, that's a great part about landscaping. It's never, it's never quite done. You know, there's always ways to improve and always ways to pop in new features. So, and that keeps us all shopping in the, in the nursery. So it's perfect. But um, yeah, so here are blaze copper leaf. And I'll, I'll put in a picture of what those look like when they're grown and filled in because right now they're not the best representation of what they look like. But when they're full and lush and thick, they're just so vibrant and such a great, great color. Um, and I, I just love the way they look against yellow. So that's why we have the trinettes to the back of them. The trinettes will kind of give us that real polished, bright look while the blaze copper leaf give us that pink and um, dramatic look. So again, we have got a foxtail palm and you guys have noticed in a small space, I tend to do that rinse and repeat. You know, I've got, you know, your linear palms, I've got your lower impacts, I've got, you know, variations of a similar feel because what you don't want is too much clutter in a space. So you really do want to make sure that everything kind of really blends and goes together, not just colors, but shapes. So if you've got weight and heaviness on one side, you make sure you kind of create that on the other side. Um, so we've got triangle palms over here on that side. I, I wanted something kind of flat and fan like like the triangle palms and that's why I brought in the travelers palms for that side so they do that same type of feel so you know that's just kind of a, a tips and tricks that um, we as designers really try to create in a space because you don't want a very boring space but you don't want one that's um, you know th that doesn't flow so because then you're always kind of looking at it thinking <laughs> we're a little off here but uh, so I uh, so I really try to do that especially when we're working in a very um, 
rectangular or squared space. I try my hardest to really bring in grooves and curves and, and layers and, and things that are going to go up and down as things grow in. So that way it does feel like you're in that resort, that, that tropical planting, that you're really nestled into that space. You're, you're kind of not doing, you know, hedge over hedge over hedge with a, you know, a tree every few feet. Um, you want that back and forth and that different variations of thickness versus vertical plants so or vertical trees. Um, okay, so again, here we have the um, we have the firebush, and I'm trying to find one that's in a full bloom so Bryce can Bryce can um, show you, but I really don't don't see one unfortunately. So I'll have to post a picture of what these guys turn into as well, so you can really see them in their three to four foot glory. So we have come to the final corner here of the flat buffer. Again, we have a triangle fan, a pygmy, a foxtail. We have blue my minds at the base for a little bit of color. And Bryce, if you kind of come at kind of where I'm standing here and look back this way, you really do get to see more of that popping in and popping out feel that we try to create in this really rectangular backyard. Now this space here, um, this fence panel, it's, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> so we really want to do something to soften it. And um, we've got two Christmas palms flanking each corner. We've got a triangle fan palm in the middle, some marguerite copper leaves, some sanchezias down here, um, some java whites. Um, you guys know I love my java whites, so I will try to stick some of these in here as often as I can. But look at this leaf. You know, these have all been kind of, again, cut back recently, but this leaf color, I mean, this is a dark spot in the garden. This area doesn't get tons and tons of sun, but look how bright that is. It's almost white in, in the space. So, um, so I kind of want this to fill in. Now these will get five to six foot tall. So um, Randy can really let these kind of take up this whole corner and you get that bright pop as soon as you walk out the door. It's almost like a spotlight in the garden. So, um, oh, look at the butterflies, so gorgeous. Yeah, so, you know, hopefully these, this will kind of take in and then those will grow in also to five feet. Those are another variety of copper leaves, the marguerites. And then again, we have the java whites on that end. So, you know, this fence kind of just disappears. You know, we've got just some palms in here just to jazz up the different layers of plants, but that's kind of their main purpose. All right, so let's go around the patio. So we needed to leave enough room for a mower to mow into this space because the last thing you want to do is create more maintenance um, when you're back here um, in doing your landscaping. So this is an easy spot. You see that these curves are real gradual, real soft. So the homeowner or the, the, their maintenance guy can easily come in with a machine and just swoop in and out through here. So we definitely wanted palm trees and plants around this big patio section because this is obviously the place where they're going to enjoy their outdoor living room space um, but you know we we needed to make sure we had room so you can tell that we we kind of played off the curves from the um, back buffer to these corner buffers so this really loops out then loops in so you have access this way um, and then um, the same with the opposite side so again we use the staple trees which are the foxtail palms and then these foxtail ferns oh my gosh these foxtail ferns i am in love with foxtail ferns you guys are going to be hearing so much about foxtail ferns because i put them in most of my landscapes i just love that texture i love that fuzzy leaf i love it next to a shiny leaf i just think they do so good they just they're and, and they stay put so they can get a little bit chunky and wide but that's easy trimming with just a little bit of maintenance and they're just low maintenance in that way so yeah I trim mine twice a year so um, next to them is another low maintenance bush with our which are mammy crotons and you guys we planted this in the winter and um, <laughs> literally right after planting we got the nastiest um, cold front that moved in so these plants have had to battle cold fronts um, and then we've gotten some really horrible, horrible um, storms recently. So they are really, <laughs> they've really been through the ringer, but um, they're showing up today and doing, just doing beautifully. So I think that kind of brings us to an end of this backyard. I, um, yeah, I'm gonna take you guys to the front yard. I wasn't planning on that, but I really kind of want to continue this, uh, this video and kind of let you see, you know, 
how we transform the backyard and the front yard. So let's walk up front and um, let me share with you a few more plants and trees. You guys will have to let me know what you think. Let's go. So we are now in the front yard, and um, this was a little tricky as far as a front yard goes. So um, this one has a septic tank that's right directly in front of the house. So we kind of had to do a two-tiered landscape to kind of give them, you know, some of that color and tropical impact that they wanted with very little space to work with. So we opted to do a separate island that's out here, which I don't usually do, but I really did like the way that it turned out. So we incorporated a couple palm trees. Um, again, we've got some pygmy date palms on each corner here. And then we've got a European fan palm as the center tree. And then just tapped in some boulders and a little bit of color um, around those boulders, just to kind of, you know, just kind of give it some weight and some placement. So this is just a, kind of a nice narrow soft planting bed that kind of defines the front um, they have a a tough time with their their ditch area so they kind of wanted something that you know, it took took the eye away from all the moisture and all the wetness that you see in this front ditch it's it's kind of been a battle for them um, so unfortunately we couldn't fix it due to the how the county um, operates here but um, what we were able to do is at least draw your eye to um, a, you know a prettier spot in the yard so so we were able to do a narrow um, bed here and then of course then we have the septic tank to contend with here and then we have um, a nice tropical planting along the foundation and face of the house which i think came out beautifully again foxtail palms i just love that big beefy trunk that they have i just think they're gorgeous um, a pygmy date palm to the rear that's going to get about 10 foot tall it's going to give them a little bit of privacy as you look to the back of the house and then a nice european fan palm is the centerpiece there amongst two small little basketball sized boulders there um, to the left So we have more of the copper leaves on the right, and then to the left side here, we've got some dwarf Carissa boxwood. Uh, these are a fun plant to work with. Um, they can be a little thorny, so you have to be up for that, but they're such slow growers. I love their round, shiny leaf, and they become such a nice foundation plant for, um, for a garden. I just think they're real nice, real defined, and they do a nice job of kind of creating a border. Um, so I use them quite often for that. This here, these are Taiwanese Exoras. Look at, I love this giant bloom on these guys. Finally, something that we're showing you today that's in bloom. So thank you guys for showing up. I appreciate it. Um, so they are gorgeous. They are fun. They're small. They're easy maintenance, um, low pest issues. These are just an, you know, a turnaround plan. I just, they, they don't disappoint. So if you need something that's going to kind of create a big impact of color, but you don't have a lot of space, can't use you know they don't have a heavy root system these are perfect for that so just kind of let them go you can keep them individual or you can let them fill in and just become lush and tropical and keep them around that three foot height because they're perfect for that the backdrop are um, trinettes uh, variegated arbicolas also called umbrella plants they go by a lot of names but um, they are your just your hardy plants i know that's why you you guys probably see them everywhere and that's the reason it's a, they're just a tough plant you know if you're you're in an area where you're you're really struggling for for um something to do well or live in that space stick a few of these guys in there they they just they'll, they'll take it so we're battling the wind here um, with these terrible thunderstorms so this is a very crooked red hibiscus tree and um it needs to be restaked but it is doing well it's blooming amongst all of the wind and damage and everything that's that's happened to it over the last couple of weeks. We've just had horrendous storms. It's been it's been a mess lately. So I'm happy it's still standing. But and then we finished it off here with some foxtail ferns. Just look how they look around a rock. I just think that's where they belong. They're just so fun. Um, so this area here. We ended up just doing some crushed granite and set in some stepping stones because obviously, um, you know, this is a spot that you can see the level changes, the grade changes. So it was a difficult area. Every time the homeowner previously mowed it, it would just get scalped. It was just, it was just not an attractive site in the garden. So I told him that 
let's just kind of create a little bit of a, a natural pad here. So this is really taken off to, to be, you know, when you open the door, easy access to get into the front. And it allowed us to have a little bit of curvature because you can tell this bed is not my swoopy natural bed that I normally do. This bed is pretty straight lined um, and it's just because of what we had to work with here. So, you know, but you can really create that with the plants um, within the bed, those curves and that softness. So I think that these did a great job of doing that. So you guys will have to let me know what you think in the comments. But, um, but yeah, and then over on the left side there of the uh, driveway, we've got again, a pygmy as a backing, the Java white copper leaves, the foxtail ferns, and the blue my mines. Um, I think they are a nice little touch over there. And I just look at the, the way that that palm tree moves in the wind, just that little bit of breeze that we're getting right now. And they just have so much. I just, I just love what they do. They just dance in the wind. So they're a nice, soft, small palm to work with. And for the most part, they don't have pest problems. They're a tough palm and then they, you know, can maintain that, you know, 10 to 12 foot height, which is usually the height that we're looking for when we're kind of creating privacy. You know, that way we have a little bit of, of that soft coverage, but Anyway, well, I, I think that about does it. And uh, you'll have to let me know what you think about this, uh, Sebastian. Typical standard yard um, of landscaping and um, if uh, you found it helpful. Thank you guys so much and I will see you in the next video tour.